Hello everyone, I'm Melly, and I'm going to be guiding you through a route for the Blasphemous, No Hit No Damage, Any% percent Skipless Ending B Run. And we're just going to hop straight into it, so go ahead and click on Pilgrimage and just show that you're selecting an empty save file. While the intro plays, here's a look at my controller settings. I've made quite a few changes from default, most notably R1 is attack, L1 is parry, and X is dodge. You don't need to make these changes, it's just so you can understand the controller viewer at the top. And in case you're curious, I have down on L2 so I can use the up CC technique. It's a speedrunning strat that you're not required to know for this guide. So when you're starting out, you can save at these pre-dos so that deaths don't set you back too much. But just remember that they do reset mobs, so as you get lower and lower PB, you can begin to skip them altogether. Except later on in the run where we do use them to refill our fervor. Alright, first boss we have is the Warden, which is a really straightforward fight. Start by attacking the front, and then right before he's about to attack you, you're going to dash past him, turn around and do a combo, and then when he jumps backwards, run past that, turn around, and resume the exact same pattern. And basically just keep doing this until he's dead. By the way, if you do find yourself running out of room, you can always back off and wait for him to finish his purple attack, and then just wait for him to jump to you before you continue the same pattern as before. Go ahead and pick this up. This is going to be our first prayer called Verdiales. And go ahead and equip it immediately. Right here, you can just go against the wall all the way, just like this, and attack this guy. Because he won't be able to hit you from there for some reason. <laughs> On this next mob, you're going to parry them and perform a repost as soon as your sword touches them. This should give you the ability to execute them, which gives us a little bit more tears. And from this height, you can actually break this floor, make your way down, and then jump right here to kill all the weirdos in the mud. And then you're going to be picking up your first bone. You get 200 tiers for every bone you pick up. I will go ahead and mention that this gameplay is edited together from like different attempts and save files, so the amount of tiers in the top right corner won't always be accurate, but if you follow along, you should always have enough. Alright, with your equipped prayer, go ahead and cast it right here. Head down these ladders and then go into this left room where we're going to be finding our first mea culpa shrine. Not only do we upgrade the strength of our sword every time we unlock one of these, but we also unlock new abilities to purchase. 
but we're not going to buy anything quite yet. Go ahead and pick up this bone and continue right. We do need to pick up a bone down here, so in order to kill these bulls, just attack them, stand still while they roll around your feet like that, and then whatever side they end up on, just attack them again. And if they ever throw a javelin, just crouch. And then here, I like to get up on this ledge and immediately cast a prayer. This should kill the guy on the left most of the time, and then all you have to worry about is the guy on the right. If the guy on the left doesn't die, you can safely stay crouched to dash around and finish attacking both mobs. In this next section, you can do one of two things. You can either do a coyote jump where you'll dash and jump off of this ledge to be able to reach the ledge on the left. And for a visual cue, I like to pretend I'm jumping off of this little branch on the side of the cliff. If you find you don't want to do the coyote jump, there is another strat. So first you can cast a prayer on the ledge here, and this will kill the first bull at the bottom. Drop down to trigger the bell guy, who's on the other side of the left wall, and then climb up for safety until he comes out. And then once he comes out, you're going to jump over him, dash past the bull, and climb up. It's not as cool, but don't worry, I won't tell anybody. And just be careful right here. After you kill a chicken, you're going to want to crouch on this ledge and deflect the razor frisbee before you continue left. Up next is Perpetua, who is a mini boss that can be defeated in just 30 hits. So to start, we're going to dash all the way to the left, and then we're going to up slash while jumping. And basically what we're doing is we're jumping and holding while performing two up slashes in the air. It's a little bit quicker than just standing still and spamming up slash, and this technique is actually useful later on. When she positions herself in the middle like this, she's about to start casting lightning bolts in random spots around the middle area. You can attack her until she starts casting them, but then I recommend just dashing away and waiting because you may end up getting trapped in the middle and you cannot dash past lightning once it strikes. So in order to properly time the parry for the charge attack, Get directly in front of her when she's getting ready to charge, and then hit the parry button as soon as she begins to move. This is because she has a significant invisible hitbox in front of her. Now, if you ever find yourself too far away when she's charging, just keep in mind you should parry a little bit sooner than you think. When attacking these red hooded guys, I recommend just doing a 1-2 combo like this because it has been found that they sometimes glitch and hit you if you do a full combo on them. So we're basically just trying to avoid that. Wait here until you have room to climb up, and then when you're attacking the red hooded guys, just be prepared to crouch and deflect the razor frisbee away. And if you notice, you also hit the red hooded guys while you deflect the frisbee. So this should prevent them from attacking you while you're crouched. Pick up this bone and then just cast a prayer here to kill the guy above. That way he doesn't bother you when you're trying to cross. Watch out for this chicken, and then once you climb down, you're going to hit this guy in the back and then kite him over to the right, away from the shockwaves. 
and then look down to make sure that platform down there is clear before you drop down. Okay, right here we're going to safely drop down by grabbing the wall on the left and then you can drop down and kill the razor guy once you know where he is. You can ignore this shortcut I'm unlocking, it's just to help me test a few things during the guide, so you can go ahead and continue down the ladder. And next we're going to get that bone you see on the right. So first you're going to wait for the bell guy on the left to hit the wall because this can knock you down as you're climbing which can mess up the timing. Quickly climb up and if you always activate the two bell guys on the right with the same timing, you should be able to dodge past them consistently to get down to the bone and back up safely. And you want to dodge past them as soon as they turn towards you so they run in the opposite direction but not after they start charging because you can't dodge past that point. As soon as you get into this next room, cast two prayers immediately. As soon as you cast the second one, drop down and dash past these two to get to the ladder and then stay eye level with this guy on the right. Then what you're going to want to do is jump not as soon as they begin to move, but rather as soon as that razor frisbee is out of their hands. The frisbee is still targeting you before then, so if you jump too early, it can still hit you. Alright, this next room is going to be really well timed. It's going to take a little practice, but it's really consistent and worth it. First, we're going to reset the room by going up the ladder and then coming back down. Then we're going to dash left four times. Then after those four times, you're going to run and jump off the ledge. And then as soon as you touch the floor, you're going to dash to the left, free fall for half a second. Now, be sure to drop down a little bit before holding right because we don't want to catch this ledge right here. If you do, you're going to get hit by the Razor Frisbee. You have a second before you fall on the spikes down below, so just give it a little bit and then hold right. Okay, in this room, don't go left just yet or you'll activate the guy with the splitting headache. Wait until the elevator is a second away from reaching the top and then drop down its left side and move a little bit more to the left to catch this platform down here. And then here we're just going to wait for the elevator to get this bone on the right. After you pick it up, you don't have to wait for the elevator, you can just dash holding left and you should catch the ledge. Okay, this next room has a few steps to it, so as soon as you enter the room, you're going to jump up and kill the chicken. And then jump on the left side of this platform when you hear the shockwave. Crouch once you get there, deflect the frisbee, and then immediately climb up the platform to kill the mob above. Then you're going to dash to the left to land beside the razor guy. Hit the bell as it's going left, and sometimes you can hit the chicken at the same time, but it's not as important. And then immediately turn around and kill the razor guy.
Here it is in real time. Careful at the top of this ladder. Make sure you go to the side before you crouch, or you're just gonna end up climbing back down the ladder and you're gonna get hit by the frisbee, so be really careful. And here, just cast a prayer and collect this rosary knot. Alright, in this next room, clear the chicken on the right as well as the one above before you head to the right and climb the dissolving platforms. That way you don't have to dodge so many chickens. You can pull this lever as soon as you see the cherub and it'll help time the second chicken so you can kill it more safely. We just got the fourth toe bead, so go ahead and equip it. And what this bead does is it significantly reduces our dash cooldown. So we can really start zooming now. Did I say now? I mean after we ride these really slow platforms. In any case, in order to dash with even less cooldown, what you want to do is you want to hold the direction you're going while also holding the diagonal down. You'll notice my joystick, which you can see above, is at about a 45 degree angle downward in whichever direction I'm dashing. You can also either time the dashes or just spam the dash button. You'll see me do both. Alright, in this room, you're going to stay standing on the right half of the platform and wait until the bell guy furthest from you turns towards you. Once they do, you're going to hold down and jump down. You don't want to crouch any sooner than that, or the bell guy furthest from you just won't see you for some reason, so make sure you're standing until the last second. We're going to go ahead and skip this preview so that we don't respawn the mobs on the way back. Alright, this is our second Mel Koopa Shrine, and we're actually going to be buying some abilities this time. Go ahead and unlock Sinful Wrath, which is the charge up attack, and Sacred Thrust, which is the dash attack. And then here, you just want to be sure to go into this room to unlock the portal. That way we can travel to it later. And then in this room, we're just going to unlock our Rosary Knot. Now we're going to go back the way we came and head to Grievance Ascends. I'm just grabbing this for the guide, but feel free to skip this so that the mobs aren't respawned on the way back. Again, if you didn't get the pre-do, you're not going to see these mobs right here.
you can see me utilizing the charge up attack, which has a little bit further reach than a normal attack. I like to use the floor as a reference for distance, like those little notches that you see in the floor. And when you see these guys, spam the up slash attack to create a constant hitbox above you that they continuously run into. Alright, this room can cause a glitch that makes you have to reload your save if it happens. So I'm going to go ahead and show you that glitch now and how you can handle it. Once you pass this glitch, if it happens, then the rest of this will just be the normal strat for this room. So start in the middle and you're going to want to parry the Tisona that comes out first and then do a repost. This is what the glitch looks like. She could stay stuck there, and as soon as you hit her, she'll actually become invulnerable. So if you don't kill her in that one hit, you won't be able to damage her anymore after that, which makes you essentially stuck in this room. So to kill her in one hit, we're going to use the charge up attack, which, as I said before, has a little bit of a further reach than the regular attack. If you're not sure how close you need to be for your charge up attack to hit before your regular attack, just slowly inch up until that charge attack hits first. The rest of this is going to be the normal strat, so you're going to stand in the middle and then parry and repost the first Tisona that spawns in whichever direction they spawned in. You'll notice that the parry's iframes protect you from the second Tisona. Right here, kill the first mob, then fall and grab the ledge immediately. The second mob will just jump over you. And all we're doing here is just waiting for that gas to pass before we drop down. Alright, so this next boss coming up is Tres Angustias, which is typically considered the most difficult boss in this run. There are two Angusias with spears and one with a large bludgeon weapon. And as a general rule, you're going to want to keep to the left of the bludgeon Angustia as she's always throwing her weapon to the right in an either small or large clockwise circle. So if you keep to the left side throughout the fight, you do have a better chance of dodging her attack. Here you're going to see the Angustia setting up for a vertical attack. So all you have to do is go all the way to the other side to avoid the bludgeon weapon and then parry all the laser attacks. I like to use a visual cue to parry the laser attacks and what you want to look out for is this blood spatter that you see on the spear right before the attack. So the timing is, as soon as you see this blood spatter, hit the parry button. Also for this attack, it'll always start with the bottom angustia and alternate between the top and bottom. And don't worry, you're not going to fall off from the parry kickback. Oh yeah, just a quick note on these spears in the walls. They sometimes create these shockwaves during certain attacks, so just be aware of them and you can also get rid of them ahead of time. This is the horizontal attack, which is the trickiest of all their attacks. If you're high enough, you want to position yourself to the left of the bludgeon angustia and then parry all the laser attacks before moving to her right to avoid the bludgeon weapon that's coming full circle at the end.
If you find yourself too low but on a long platform, I recommend parrying three lasers and then dashing past the bludgeon weapon right as that last laser is thrown at you. That way you dodge both of them at the same time. Unfortunately, if you're too low and you're on a small platform, which is really bad RNG, it's really hard to do that last dash because of the big gap in between. And so because of that, overall I recommend just trying to stay in the upper half of the screen throughout this whole fight. By the way, if you sense the bludgeon weapon is going to be thrown at you and you're unfortunately on the right, you can dash past it if you have the platform. Typically that's a last ditch effort though. I highly recommend using the Verdeala's prayer in this fight. If you see the Angustias are at one end of a really large platform, go ahead and cast that prayer at the opposite end and it'll reach them on the other side doing a lot of damage. And in this other scenario, you can cast the prayer in a small platform when all the Angustias are around it, whether they're fully combined or separated, and it causes a lot of damage because it confines that prayer in a small area. Also, if you time the prayer just right, the iframes will protect you from that beam attack. In this room to the right is an optional health upgrade you can grab. I'm going to show you a few other locations throughout the route where you can pick up some more if you still need them. We're going to be hitting this intersection a few times in this route, so 
For this first time around, we're going to go up and pick up a heart real quick, and then we're going to head back down. So what the Heart of the Virtuous Pain does is it increases the duration of your parry stance. So you have a larger window to parry things. Just keep in mind that it takes a little bit longer to recover. It's going to be really useful for certain bosses. You don't have to kill this guy, but I just decided, fuck this guy. Just hold right at the start of this room, you're not going to get hit by the spikes. And here I'm just waiting for the fireballs to sync up before I drop down. And similar to the other room, you can just hold left and not hit these spikes. If you're comfortable with this, you can just drop down after a fireball and then dash past the spikes as they go down. But feel free to slow it down if you need to and just take it slow. I forget to do it here, but you can also use a charge up attack to kill the chair guy more quickly. Alright, before this fight, remember to equip the Heart of Virtuous Pain at this pre-do. And next boss up is Tempiedad. Start the fight with a dash attack, allowing you to immediately be beside Tempiedad. That way they'll only attack with a slap or a kick. Parry whichever attack it is, then immediately dash attack. If the previous attack was a slap, you can do a combo after your dash attack since it takes Tempida a little bit longer to recover.
If the previous attack was instead a kick, then I would just wait for the next attack because then Pida recovers a lot more quickly. And just continue this pattern until he's dead. Travel back to Alberto where we're going to be donating to the church. Alright, go into the church and we're going to tithe 5,000 tears to get our next bead. Exit the church and don't forget to go back in to actually pick up the bead. So this next bead is called Token of Appreciation and what it does is it gives a 15% damage increase to your sword attacks if your flasks are all empty. Oh, hi sweetie. What a sweetheart. I'm going to go ahead and skip these mobs because once you get down to a low PB, you're going to start skipping pre meaning these guys won't even be here. So we're just going to go ahead and skip them and we actually don't need these tiers anymore. intersection again and this time we're going to go up. Pre-dues refill your flask so be sure to empty them after you activate one. Okay, this next room's a little timed. Once you go in, you're going to quickly dash to the left. And as you're dashing, make sure you dash past this mob, 
And then on the bridge, dash attack. And then just run away from the witch. Alright, in this area you just have to be really mindful of the wind pushing you side to side when you're going through it. careful when getting this bone, you will need the wind in order to make this jump. And the same goes for the way back. Clear these two mobs first because we're going to be quickly dashing through here after we pick up a fervor upgrade to the right. Something to note, your fervor is actually refilled after upgrading so keep that in mind if you want to use more prayers on mobs before these upgrades. I recommend picking up this bead called Piece of a Tombstone. It reduces the recovery time after you fall from a great height. It's a quick grab and a nice to have for the next boss, Our Lady.
Important note on these ghosts. Be sure to wait until they're fully formed before you attack them. Any sooner and you might miss, meaning they won't get stunned and they'll just immediately attack you. Alright, next boss up is Our Lady. At the beginning of this fight, Our Lady will always attack with three single laser attacks, followed by a rapid fire pinwheel of fireballs. Right after the laser attacks are done, dash all the way to the left to dodge the fireballs since there are bigger gaps between them at that point. You can also consider casting a prayer for some iframes and then go back to the middle. Now, there are two main phases to Our Lady, and in the first phase, Our Lady attacks with one hand, but once that second phase is triggered, she'll pull up her second hand and cast double the attacks. So we really want to avoid fighting for too long, if at all, in the second phase. So the goal is to bring Our Lady's health down to 50%, and then we're going to deflect a set of red orbs into her forehead. Any less than 50%, and the second phase will be triggered. There are two consistent positions for this. One is when Our Lady is to the left, so we're going to stand right against the wall and face her. If she casts red orbs, then you're going to up slash each one into her forehead. I recommend hitting them once they reach about this point. When Our Lady is positioned in the middle, you can stand at her right ear and perform the up slashes. If you ever find yourself that you're unable to defeat Our Lady quickly enough using just the red orbs, you can cast a prayer for iframes when she attacks with both hands. This will grant you additional time to deal damage and potentially kill her in time. I could have killed her in time in this example, but I just wanted to show you a good timing to cast a prayer for iframes against a double-handed attack. And it's just as a last resort, ideally you want to avoid this phase at all costs. We're going to be picking up Weight of Sin, which is a plunge attack, and Last Words, which gives you a four times combo.
By the way, if you use the pre-do before this boss, you're gonna have to worry about this guy down here. So you can just use weight of sin on him to the left of the ladder, not to the right like I did here, and you'll be fine. Pick up this rosary knot on the left platform right here, and if you still need health upgrades, there's one to the right. Don't map it. All right, with these initial bosses killed, we're going to head to the bridge to fight Esdras. So we're going to head all the way to the right from here. If you had removed the Heart of Virtuous Pain at any point, go ahead and re-equip it now for this fight and empty your flasks. While we go through this fight, something to always keep in mind is to try to keep your distance from Esdras in between his attacks. It'll give you more time to react. You'll always begin with a spinning lightning attack, so you're going to want to stand around the middle of the bridge at what appears to be this water drain and then parry the attack from there. Due to the knockback, you'll end up right beside Esdras, so you're going to quickly turn around and perform a combo. Here you can see me keeping my distance after I finished attacking him, the length being about half the arena. Every time he does a spinning lightning attack, just reset to whichever middle water drain is furthest from him and perform a parry. If you see a red trail when Esdras runs towards you, that means he's about to execute a spinning attack. Jump over that and follow up with a combo. If there isn't a trail, you can either walk or dash past him and then turn around and attack him. By the way, I recommend making Esdras come to you before you jump or dash past any of his attacks. That way space opens up behind him making it easier for you to keep your distance for the next attack. Quick but important note, if you ever notice that Ezras isn't getting stunned like this during your attacks, I recommend just dashing away because he can suddenly attack you, so just be really careful. Once you get his health down to less than 6 bars, Ezras will begin to include the wall of lightning attack as well as the projectile attack. As long as you maintain your distance, you should have enough time to crouch for the projectiles. 
Lower his health to no less than three sections, and then after one of his attacks, you're gonna wanna deal as much damage as possible, as this will then trigger the last phase of the fight, introducing his sister, Perpetua. Once you trigger the last phase, you can cast a prayer from afar just to get a little extra damage on him. Now, once Perpetua appears, you're gonna wanna avoid this spot in particular because she always casts a lightning here. Continue fighting Esdras as you were before, but now you have to be prepared to quickly position yourself in front of Perpetua right before she charges. It's very similar to when you fought her. You want to execute the parry as soon as she begins to move. And just a reminder that your prayer gives you iframes, something to keep in mind when they're attacking you at the same time. Nice, now we picked up Taranto to my sister, which is another prayer we'll be using a lot in this route. You can make this jump to get this bone, but it's not always consistent and you're probably going to fall down a lot of the time, so I'm just going to show you what to do when you fall down. So these next mobs with the purple vet on their back are really dangerous. The strat for these is to run past them when they initially jump at you, then run up beside them and spam up slash. Now, you'll be safe as long as you're up slashing, but what you're going to want to do is get close enough to them so that your up slash hits them while still protecting you from their purple projectiles. If you're not close enough, then just slowly inch forward in between throws. Go ahead and equip that new prayer you just got called Taranto to my sister, and you're going to cast it when you're in between these two mobs above. Keeping in mind it takes a second to cast. Here's where you grab the bone if you didn't make the jump earlier. Okay, here you're going to deal with two purple vat mobs at one time. I like to wait at the start of the room a few seconds so I don't go too early and end up aggroing both of them. And then you're going to run to the right, stand here, jump to aggro one of the mobs, and then kill them. After you kill that one, you can run to the right and kill the remaining mob that's making its way back to the left. In this next room is a new mob, uh, we call them sofa monsters, that requires a specific combination of attacks and sometimes prayers to kill. This one in particular can be killed with just melee attacks, but you can use a prayer for iframes in case you miss. So for this first sofa monster, we're going to dash in and crouch under his first fireball attack. then dash attack while it's walking backwards, and then do a full combo. And you want to make sure it's walking backwards because if it's walking forwards after you dash attack, you're going to get a contact hit. After the combo, dash away immediately and then crouch under the next fireball attack. And then once that's clear, just do another dash attack, full combo, and this should kill him.
By the way, if you don't kill it before the third fireball, note that this one in particular can rebound and make its way back. So if you happen to see it coming back, cast a prayer for iframes and that should also help kill the sofa monster. Let me show you what that looks like. By the way, you can drop down here and use your butt to bust open the wall. Note that there's a mob approaching you from the left, so if you can't kill this guy above in time, be sure to kill that guy to the left first and then continue killing the guy above. So there's a strat for this room in particular that requires the technique I've mentioned before where you can reduce your dashing cooldown by holding the direction you're going while also holding diagonal down. If you're not able to do that consistently, I would just take this room slow and even consider doing some prayers to get rid of the mobs. If however you can do the quick dashing, you're going to start by running to the left until you get to the body on the floor. Once you reach the body, you're going to dash quickly six times, then immediately stop and stay crouched to wait for the large sensor to pass. Once it passes, then just quickly dash left all the way. We need to jump down to a platform down below that we can't see. It's on the left in between the other side of this gap and the cherub. Alright, next boss up is Melchiades, and before you go in, make sure you go all the way to the top, find a Mary Culpa Shrine to upgrade your sword, as well as purchase an ability. We're going to pick up Ascending Edge, which allows you to do this upward slash as the combo finisher. And this is really useful for this fight, as well as a few mobs later in the route. Also, I forget to equip it right here, but go ahead and equip the Taranto to my sister prayer right before you go in. Start by up slashing the two largest arms. And I like to stand where I see this arm in the background as a reference point. Once Melchiades drops down, you're going to want to execute an up slash combo, and then you can follow that up with a couple of pogo attacks before you fall. You can also fall to the middle arm and use a Taranto prayer to try and immediately drop Melchiades back down. Just do it quickly before he gets all the way back up because he can just suddenly stab at you.
Just a quick little note, Melchizedek will close his hand into a fist right before he does a beam attack. If Melchizedek starts moving from left to right while stabbing downward, you can move along with him and attack the arms until you reach this point in particular. If he's stabbing straight down, it's safe to stand right here and just use up slashes to target the remaining arms. Just keep in mind that this strat only works if Melchizedek is stabbing straight up and down. Don't do it if he's attacking at an angle. And one last hint I'll leave you with. I would reserve your remaining fervor to use prayers for iframes in case you get caught with really bad RNG regarding those beams and hands. You can even switch to Vetter the LS to cast even more prayers. Make sure you have Heart of Virtuous Pain on at this point because we'll be getting to a mob soon where we're going to do nothing but parries and repose to fight him. So this upcoming sofa monster is one of the more difficult ones because of the caged angel on its back. I forget to show you here, but go ahead and equip the Vetter the Alice prayer before you go in. Grab this ledge and drop down. Then, while staying crouched, cast however many prayers you have left. If you have them all, you might even be able to kill the sofa monster with just the prayers. If you weren't able to kill it with just prayers, you're going to have to use melee. So take your time with this sofa monster and always be mindful that both the 4 times combos and the dash attacking can lock you into an animation, leaving you vulnerable to either the angel attacking or the sofa monster just walking into you. Like right there, I almost get hit. And quick tip. You can actually hit the angel to push it back a little bit for some breathing room. Alright, this is the mob where the Heart of the Virtuous Pain is going to come in handy. So this mob's called a Soldier of the Anointed Legion, so I'm just going to call him Sal for short. The most important thing to remember about Sal is that they have a sizable invisible hitbox in front of them. So we're going to take that into account when positioning ourselves. Keep this amount of distance from Sal, then parry either of their attacks. If it's just a swing attack, you're going to parry and repost, and after every repost, back up and reset this distance. If it's a spinning attack, you can only parry and get knocked back. So after the knockback, just move forward and reset that distance. Before you start to run out of room on one side, I would spam the dash button right after performing a repost for a nice consistent timing to get past Sal without getting caught by a backswing from too late of a dash. Also, I would only dash past this spinning attack as a last resort. It's really tricky to time and not get hit by that backswing. It's safest to dash immediately after a repost. In this room, you're going to jump up to this spot to trigger the mobs, then immediately stand back here and up slash to hit the angel twice. Mm -hmm. 
Back up to do a parry and repost on the angel, and then it should just take one more hit to kill him. And then dash attack the second mob. For these guys, you definitely want to dash attack before they start charging or they're going to hit you. This next item is the Heart of Oils, which increases your sword strength by 30%, but you take double damage. Which is fine, because we don't want to get hit anyway. And go ahead and equip it at this pre-do. Also, really important, you're going to want to activate these ladders on the way down, because we will be coming back up later in the route. And this last letter is very easy to forget. It's to the right before you drop down. If you forget it, you're going to have to redo quite a few rooms, so definitely remember this one. I've seen a few people confused when these ghosts were activated. It's just when you accidentally step on those books on the floor that they get angry. So all we're doing is just avoiding that on the floor. Travel to the Brotherhood and unlock the last Rosary Knot that we have. Psych! Next up, go to Albero, and we're going to donate another 5,000 to the church, this time for fervor refill at the pre -dues. Before you head back to the library, go ahead and get your fervor refilled at this pre-do. Before you go in, equip the Veradialis prayer first, and then we're going to quickly run to the left and pull the lever. And then right after you finish pulling the lever, just spam the prayer button. Then equip the Ranto and just cast it from here. And you can go ahead and cast the last one on this guy. We're going to refill our fervor in a little bit. We're going to be activating these pre a lot now for that fervor refill, so just a reminder, always empty your flasks after. Something I noticed during editing, you can spare Taranto on this mob standing right here. You have enough fervor.
As soon as the mob moves to throw the book at you, you can either drop down and catch the ladder like this, or just hold down to avoid that book. As soon as you pull this lever, look to the left, crouch, and deflect the book. And then be prepared to jump over the book and dash past the mob on this next one. I forgot to show it again, but switch to the Verdiales prayer here. By the way, you can do an up slash combo on this guy and you can get another health upgrade in that room if you still need them. Cast a Taranto on this guy before you get to the books and then drop down on the left to get the drop of coagulated ink bead. This bead gives 100% damage increase to your prayer, so go ahead and equip that immediately. Then just grab the ledge, drop down, then quickly dash to the right. Quickly dash in front of this statue and perform an up slash combo. We're gonna go get a fervor upgrade before heading to the next boss. This next room is time, so equip Veradialis first, then we're gonna hold left running, hitting some of the mobs along the way, then stop where I pause. Oops. Then once you get here, you're going to quickly crouch and spam 2-3 to three prayers to kill the sofa monster to the left. You'll hear it die. If you killed it in 2 prayers, just quickly dash to the left after that blade passes. Uh, if not, you can cast an extra spell to hit the statues again before you head left. Now this next room is a little scary and you can take it slow and figure out your own timing but what I like to do is I like to just hold left for the first half which is up to the statue right here and then I slow it down and dodge each individual blade after that in the second half. Oops, meant to go up the ladder. Pick up this fervor upgrade, and this is going to allow us to have three full Taranto prayers for the next boss, Exposito. Okay, we have a sofa monster here, so go ahead and equip the Verdiales prayer and get to this spot, cast one prayer, and then just do a dash attack, full combo, and that should kill it. Careful not to climb up this platform too soon. That blade has a bigger hitbox than you think. Be 
be sure to equip the Taranto Prayer before this next boss fight. Alright, the next boss is Exposito, which requires a lot of timing and steps, utilizing all three of the prayers that we have. So to begin, you're going to activate the fight by going in the middle and then quickly dashing to the left. You're going to position yourself around the second or third square on the floor and then charge up an attack. I let go of the charge right around here. And then as soon as the snake leaves, you're going to quickly dash to the right and stand on this third square of this section. Quickly charge up another attack and then release it as soon as you see the snake. And then right after you hit the snake, you're going to inch a little bit forward and cast a prayer. After you cast that, you're going to dash to the leftmost circle right after and then run back and cast another prayer around this spot. This should trigger Exposito, the baby in the background, to move away from you. As soon as you finish casting that, just run to the circle and back to the same spot and cast your third and final prayer. I like to do this little run just to help with the timing. Let's run that back in real time so you can see what it looks like. Go left first to get the Mea Culpa Shrine. Unlock Sacred Lunge and Sacred Onslaught, which are upgrades to the dash attack. While you're climbing back up, just note that the hitboxes for these sensors disappear as soon as the smoke disappears. Alright, now that we're back to the elevator, go ahead and give it the two masks that we have and go up two levels.
really important. Get this travel port on the left before heading down because we're going to need it later. Alright, last sofa monster, I promise. So, before we trigger the sofa monster, we're gonna jump to this hole in the background right here and jump back. And that should trigger an angel to attack you. You're gonna wanna kill that first. Also, equip Veradialis when you get a chance. And then stand right in the middle of this pillar and cast three prayers. And then quickly get out of there as soon as you hear the sofa monster die because there will be a fireball that rebounds and eventually make its way back to you. Alright, there are two wardens in this section, so go ahead and equip the Taranto prayer and we're going to go to the left until we trigger both of them. Use an up slash combo on the warden that dropped left and then after you kill them, dodge the other warden's jump or attack and then cast a prayer to kill them. As soon as you enter the room, you're going to immediately run to the left and then jump from the middle of this bench in the background and then you're going to do a downward attack at this pillar. And then just dash attack these guys. Make sure you kill these two mobs that spawn in on the right before continuing because they're more dangerous to kill on the way back. This bottom left section of this area, past this big mob right here, has an optional fervor upgrade if you want to pick it up. If you don't want to, just go up this ladder and continue the route, but I'm going to go ahead and show you how you can get it. Fatality.
run as left as you can on this gate, and then as soon as you see the gate move, cast a prayer. Before we go left to the boss, you can get this predo over here for a save. If you don't need it, you can just go left already. Alright, next boss up is Girise. So, as soon as you hit the floor, Girise is going to disappear and then drop down on you, so just be prepared to run to the side. If Girise teleports to either side of the room on the floor, go to the opposite side and position yourself at the second to last section of the gate you see in the background. Facing away from him, you're going to jump over his slow charge and then execute a combo. Always dash away right after that combo though, because Girse may suddenly drop down on you afterward. When Girse teleports to the ceiling, you're going to quickly dash under him, and then wait to see which attack he'll perform before you start jump attacking him. It's important to wait because he may send a sword at an angle that could hit you while you're jumping. Once Kirsa teleports to the right wall and clings to it, you're going to want to crouch immediately. And then, after he throws the sword into the wall, just keep away from the middle where he'll appear. Now that Kirsa's sword is in the wall, he's going to start performing another set of attacks. The first of which he'll appear on the floor and just dash back and forth. You can either jump over these or perform a dash attack as long as he's not in the middle of performing a charge. If, however, he doesn't appear on the floor, you're going to want to be prepared to dash back and forth to evade his drop down attacks. While Kiris' sword is still stuck in the wall, you want to avoid reducing his health to less than three sections. Because if you do, his drop down attacks will no longer target you and they'll become random, making them much more unpredictable and dangerous. Wait until he takes his sword out of the wall and avoid the flames in the middle. Now Girsa is going to return to his original set of attacks that he had at the beginning of the fight. So just finish the fight using the same strategies as before. Another important note that should be taken into account for any of the bosses really is the fact that you can still unfortunately get hit after killing a boss if there's still an active attack. For example, you can get hit by Girsa's sword as it's still circling the arena, even after Girsa is dead.
another health upgrade to the left if you still need it. Travel back to the Arch Cathedral rooftops portal we unlocked earlier. Also, don't dash past this door because you may fall to your death, and this may have happened to me. All right, put in the last mask into the elevator and go up. Up next is Grisanta, so I recommend equipping Taranto before going in. Instead of dashing, just run up to the fight's trigger point so you can ensure a nice safe distance away from Grisanta at the start of the fight. Grisanta is going to start with one of several attacks. So for this example, Grisanta is going to lift her sword over her shoulder right before either performing an overhead slash or assuming a defensive stance. In either case, you're going to parry as soon as Grisanta's sword makes it over her shoulder like this. If it turned out to be an overhead slash, you're going to parry it and then you're going to immediately dash attack right after. You'll end up right beside Grisanta after this, so to avoid any contact hits, just continuously attack until she backflips away, and then reset back into the middle. If instead she assumes a defensive position, wait and then parry as soon as she begins to move in this case, because her attack is a little bit quicker from this stance. Grisanta can also slash from below. She'll swing her sword further backwards first, before bringing it back up for the slash. Here in the starting position, you're far enough away from the attack, so just wait until she misses, and then parry when her sword is making its way over her shoulder again, just in case she follows up with an overhead slash. And again, if instead she assumes a defensive position, just parry as soon as she begins to move. Just to show you real quick, if you ever find yourself too close for the slash from below, parry it as soon as she begins to swing her sword backwards and perform a repost. This will cause her to be stunned and she'll backflip away. Okay, for the last attack that can happen at the beginning as well as throughout the fight is this high jump air attack. When Grisanta jumps high into the air, you're going to run opposite her to avoid the initial attack and then jump over the purple wave back into the middle. It's possible you end up right next to Crisanta in this case, so stay put and be prepared to parry her next attack, which could either be an overhead slash or a slash from below. And again, if she assumes a defensive position instead, you're going to parry as soon as she begins to move. And in this case, I was able to keep my distance. And once you finish attacking, just be prepared to parry or evade any of the attacks she's done before. By the way, if you ever find yourself accidentally dash attacking past Grisanta, she'll backflip to the opposite side of the arena. Don't worry too much about it, all the strats remain the same, just mirrored. Once the next phase is activated, Grisanta will send a purple wave towards you. Run away and then jump over that wave back into the middle to set up for the next phase. Grisanta will introduce a new attack where she'll disappear and reappear, performing her own dash attack at you from either the sides or diagonally. Staying around the middle, jump and hold as soon as you see her reappear. Once she's done with this attack, she'll reappear standing either to your left or right, always opposite of you, depending on what side of the middle you're on. 
And a really good reference for the exact middle is the middle of Crisanta's health bar right here. Once she reappears, run up to her and cast either a single prayer or attack her with a three times combo. Once you finish attacking, just be prepared to parry or evade any of the other attacks she's done before. Adelante. Purgad mi alma mordida por el milagro. Here's just a quick look at our final build before we head to the final boss. Alright, final boss. Here we go. In my swing, what's not now? Whenever Escribar teleports, just hold your position and then slash left and right with single attacks back and forth. This helps prevent Escribar from teleporting directly onto you, which would cause a contact hit. You're going to notice a color when Escribar is casting an attack. Here he's casting the purple attack, which I recommend keeping your distance when evading it. It's probably the worst attack in this first phase because of just how quickly those projectiles come out. Note that you can dash past Escribar during his attacks. For the green attack, you can just spam up slash and deflect the green orbs away. This blue attack with the lightning starts off as green for some reason, so don't rely too much on that Q. But for this attack, the wind will always go right to left, so just shimmy to the right and avoid the lightning by either running away from the single bolt or staying in between the two bolts. For the fire attack, I like to shimmy to the side and then sometimes even jump to create a gap I can dash through after. And remember, you can dash past Escribar if he's in the way. Alright, first half done. During the second half of this fight, the sword takes a total of 8 hits to kill with the amount of strength we have for this route. I recommend waiting to hit the sword the 8th time until you have some platforms available so that you can immediately climb up and start hitting Eskidibar's face. That way you don't waste any time stuck on the floor while the face plates open. Once the face plate opens, hit Eskidibar no more than 15 times during the first cycle. Any more than that, and he'll add the fireball attack into his rotation, which is much more challenging to dodge.
All right, that's 15 times, so we're going to wait for the next cycle. Just wanted to show you the trajectory of these projectiles, just so you could see where some of the safe spots are. Also, try to keep the sword on screen because if it's ever off screen and performs an attack, it can actually glitch and you have no way to parry or evade it, so try to always keep it on screen. Alright, after killing the sword for a second time, position yourself slightly to the left of Escribar's face and cast Taranto three times. I like to use his armor in the background as a reference on where to stand because if you're too close or you're too far, the prayer might not do as much damage. Once you're comfortable with a good reference, then three prayers should be enough to kill him. Now, there's still a possibility you get bad RNG and you get the fireball attack anyway in between casting the prayers. Or maybe you weren't able to pull off all three prayers. In either case, I recommend practicing evading this attack just in case it happens to you. So in order to avoid the fireballs, you want to shuffle to the side then, when you're about to run out of room, dash through a gap in the fireballs and then shuffle to the other side. During practice, I recommend just staying in this final phase with the fireballs in the rotation, just so you can practice dodging them. And there you have it. Thank you so much for checking out my guide. I really hope you find it useful. Feel free to drop by my Twitch channel at Melly on the Air where you'll probably find me doing more no-hit challenge runs, as well as playing a variety of other games. Again, thank you so much for watching, and very best of luck on your no-hit runs.